And you're welcome back to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. A final conversation this morning has taken us back to Kaduna State, the place where, you know, we had lots of protests a few uh, weeks ago over the NLC um, sack of its members. And now the NLC are protesting over the sack of 16 lecturers and two members of the non-academic staff in schools in the state. And we've invited an education consultant, Mr. Yomi Fawemi. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. All right. Good this morning this discussion is very controversial because it's Labour versus the Kaduna State Government once more, but this time around in the educational sector. Now, Labour in Kaduna State is saying that the Kaduna State Governor has no right, no jurisdiction, even as visitor of the school, to actually sack or fire any lecturer. Um, let's begin with that. Does he have a right to do so? Yeah, so I mean, the general law, the general rule guiding Nigerian universities is the fact that it is the council of the university uh, that can sack, not a visitor. The role of a visitor is essentially uh, ceremonial and financing. So the responsibility for sacking lies with the council, not to the vice councillor, not to the poor councillor, but with the council sitting together after it has gone through the process. So one, the visitor cannot sack. Uh, and again, what also makes this is a big nuance is the fact that when um, the, the imbroglio between NLC and, and the Cardinal State Government and the Federal Ministry of Labor at the Minister of Nike, there was an MOU that was signed. And actually, part of the agreement in the MOU is that nobody will be punished for any act. And that's a standard thing after every industrial action. Unions always want to say, we can't punish. And you sign it. So why do you go back to remedy on what to punish? So beyond the legal issue, there's also the moral issue. You sign something a couple of weeks back and you're going against it. Okay, so, you, you mentioned something there. Um, you said you used the word due process. So when we look at this situation, we see NLC, you know, bringing out facts to say that these lecturers that were sacked, they were never queried, they never faced any disciplinary committee, they were just, you know, arbitrarily dismissed from office. I mean, why should that be? Yeah, I, I really I really can't explain it. It's been established in law in Nigeria and based on a pictorial of court decisions. You can't sack an employee in Nigeria without following process. You must follow the process as you have defined in your staff handbook. That university has a staff handbook that has a disciplinary process, that has an escalation process for discipline, that has roles and responsibilities for which you discipline. So if you violate your own uh, university university policies and process, then you can't say you have done the right thing. Um, the university has a right to sack any employee. I mean, the law has also established that you can't force an unwilling employee on an employer. You can't also force an unwilling employer on an employee. But you must use due process. If you refuse to use due process, you're just wasting your time. Those employees will have a right to approach Nigerian Industrial Court. And it's a slam dunk case because they have not been, uh, they have not, the due process was not used in this process of termination of appointments. Okay. Well, you know, it, it seems a little, you know, dictatorial um, to just fire people that way. And how does it sound, you know, that people will be fired for simply protesting, which they also have a right to, to protest? Um, what does that look like for Kaduna State? And it doesn't seem like a lot was learned from the last protest. Did you say it sounds uh, dictatorial and you're referring to Governor Rufai? I well, thought there should be some synonym between those two names, right? I mean, he has developed a character of being dictatorial. I mean, and let's be very sincere, Governor Rufai is one of the finest governors we have from the point of view of project execution. That man has a vision, he knows what he wants, but his methods usually doesn't work well. I mean, if employees by law have a right to protest, Employees, by law, have a right. Unions have a right to ask their members to go and protest after they follow due process in in, an, in informing people what they want to do. And that has happened in the case of Cardinal State. Also, uh, the Cardinal State government has also signed an MOU saying, I will not punish anybody for participating in that strike. Also, the laws of the land, the court decisions have also said, if you want to sack any employee, you have to follow the due process as enshrined in your company organization and so on those three legs that can make any table to stand uh the government of cardinal state that would not have done the right thing uh if they violated all those three and go ahead it's not been just been the it's actually also 
taking an illegal act. So if you are dictatorial because you are doing something that is right and is legal, it's even different. But here, you are committing a crime. You are, you are, you are violating laws. Uh, so beyond the, the, the challenge of being a dictator in a democracy, there is also the bigger challenge that you are, you are flouting laws uh, while you are being a dictator. It, it can't be worse than that. I, I will expect the governor to do the right thing. I mean, Katina has made a lot of progress in education. I mean, we can't take that away from Brunei Rufai in the last six years. But you allow uh, things like this to just um, define your legacy uh, just because you want to score some political points or make a statement. So, I think so this what, action uh, is totally... What hope um, do workers in Kaduna State, and would maybe now use Kaduna State as a point uh, to reflect on the whole country, what hope do Nigerian workers have that their jobs are always safe whenever they decide to join a protest and they would not be fired? Um, is there any courts, is there any bodies that can always stand you know, for them and protect them against these you know, tendencies? Oh, okay. One of one of the biggest legacy of uh, the General, uh, sorry, President Olusegun uh, administration, uh, 1999 to 2007, was the signing into law of the Nigeria Industrial Court Act. That is the most significant thing that has happened to labor um, labor education in Nigeria since history, and that is creating a dedicated court that handles labor related issues. Yeah. And that court has been very effective. You, I mean, they have had some of the finest and most brilliant people who has been president. The current one is uh, Justice Kanti, who is an excellent, brilliant man. So a Nigerian worker whose right has been uh, breached or whose right has been, been, um, has been violated has a right to go to the Nigerian Industrial Court. And they are all over the place in Nigeria. We have in Lagos, Abuja, I think in Genegu, I mean, maybe like 13, 14. And it's not just a court for workers and employers and labor issues. It's also a court that has developed a capacity to give judgment very quickly. I can tell you that if this governors, if this lecturer has go to court in a matter of months, they're going to get judgment. Okay. And not only that, the court has also been very brilliant in the sense that the judgment are available on social media. Oh, I forgot, uh, we are under a regime that has banned Twitter. But after every court decision, you get a link to the major issues there. And it, a and a link of the court judgment, so you can read. It's available on Twitter. Okay. Um, um, but <clears throat> you know what's going to happen in Nigeria, where another dictator has decided to ban, ban, ban Twitter. Okay, so I, I want to ask you about a particular trend we've seen amongst our governors and, and you know, in government, where you know two parties, government being one, signs an agreement, and then they, they go ahead to renege that. You, you, we know that Jusin, the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, and the Nigeria Governors Forum signed an MOU regarding payments of you know salaries and all that judicial autonomy, but they're still failing to, to follow through. Now, on May 20th, the labor unions and the Kaduna State government signed an MOU that all participants in the protest will not be victimized. But that's exactly what we're seeing now. So why do we have this repetitive cycle of, you know, government signing an MOU with the people and then breaking that same, that, that, that same agreement? Yeah, I mean, I mean, very great question. One of the biggest challenges about the fact that many people in public office don't realize is that when you say a society is ruled, uh, is governed by the rule of law. What that means is that that society cannot be governed by the rule of man. The fact that you ascribe to the rule of law suggests that you do not want to be governed by the rule of man. And that is what has been a challenge with many state governors. They want to rule their state by the rule of men. They want to take decisions. Uh, a, a governor in Gombe State, and two governors have done it in the last four weeks, I just said, is resigning the certificate of occupancy for people that already have theirs. A governor in the South South, River State to be precise, who interestingly is a lawyer, said he was revoking the certificate of occupancy of a hotel because some people went to do some political meetings there. I mean, so governors have demolished houses, taking action without following the, the rule of law, which is very, very unfortunate, which is also what has played itself here and here. You, even if there's no law that guides it, I mean, if you have signed an agreement, what is expected of you as a professional, as a gentleman, as a, somebody that believes in, in law and order is for you to follow the dictates of what you, you signed it. I mean, even though we know that you didn't want to sign, well, you signed eventually. So you should do the right thing. And, and it's very unfortunate that we have systems and processes and agreements in Nigeria. And it is a government that is violating it. What you expect is that it's the other party that should be violating agreements. 
But when your government are the ones that can uh, respect sanctity of contract, when it's your government that cannot respect their words, it, it, it's pretty unfortunate and uh, totally unexpected of leaders uh, in a democracy. I mean, is there still any hope and faith and trust and or belief in the Nigerian Labour Congress uh, to fight for the cause of the common, you know, Nigerian? Um, should you know Nigerian workers still have faith in in that uh, body? Hey, let's, let's also remember that uh, I mean, one of the legacies. I mean, I'm trying to talk about some of the people that have done quite a lot in the labour sector in Nigeria in recent past. One of the legacies of the Babangida administration was to create two labor centers, which is the Nigerian Labor Congress for junior staff and the Trade Union Congress for senior staff. Yeah. Um, what has happened, however, is that because the, the, the two things have helped the course of the Nigerian Labor Congress. One, it has more people. Of course, if you remember the parameter nature of uh, org structure, they have more members at, at junior levels. Uh, so they, they are everywhere. They, are, they have a bigger presence than the Trade Union Congress. Uh, and they also have some critical um, critical associations in NLC uh, who can hold this nation to the jugular, particularly an association like uh, NUPEN that can affect the distribution of petroleum products. So many people have chosen to uh, align with NUPEN, uh, sorry, with NLC, even though by law they are supposed to be members of TUC. So those lecturers, for example, in Cardinal State uh, University are members of ASU and they are by design members of Trade Union Congress. But they know that trade union program is not as effective as the Nigerian Labour Congress. So that's why they are aligning themselves there. You will see that uh, when people were sacked in Cardinal State, for example, it was Labour Trade, trade Union, Nigerian Labour Congress that was at the forefront uh, because they have more members. So many Nigerians say they don't trust them um, and or they, they are not as effective. But they are as effective as they choose to be. If they call out people, people will respond, particularly when the NLC takes up an issue where people have a stake in. So, for example, if the NLC says, oh, we want to protest that they are privatizing um, airports, uh, like it happened uh, when, when they were doing concession in the airport, many people will not be for that because many people say, how does that concern me? But when people are losing their jobs, like the case in Cardinal State, where people have actually lost their job, if the NLC calls those people out, those people will come out, right, because they are going to benefit. Now, those people will come out, their children will come out, their wives, their husbands, their relatives will come out. So when NSA picks up issues that are public interest, uh, there is more attention and more, more focus. Also, remember, that's the last part I'll say related to this particular question you asked, that when NLC focuses on the states, it's more effective. Yeah. So, for example, when NLC was pushing the issues in Canada State, it was able to get more traction. The challenge is that NLC tries to do things nationally, and of course, that's a six states is a lot um, to, to mobilize action. So it's just like when also when INEC is doing election in the state, it's more effective than when they are doing national elections. Yeah. So when NLC fits the states, you had better buckle up because they're going to give you a lot of trouble yeah. and, and they're going to make a lot of trouble. All right. Okay. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you and have a nice day. You too. Really lots of, of angles to this. And one important question that, you know, is bugging me is, would the Kaduna state government really reinstate these lecturers? Because we saw what happened during the NLC protest. They said thousands of workers had been laid off. They protested, five-day warning strike. At the end of the day, the strike was called off, but we haven't heard anything about this work has been reinstated. We did be the same thing with these 16 lecturers and two non-academic staff. Uh, also, he mentioned the importance of the labor courts. The NLC haven't threatened to protest once more if you know they don't restate the workers. So rather than go out on the streets again, first of all, would Kaduna State be able to even handle another protest? Why don't they go to the industrial courts and sort this out you know, with the law? So lots of questions we need to ask, and uh, this issue is still unfolding, and we hope to see the end of it. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, the industrial court definitely, like he mentioned, uh, should you know, be a, um, you know, a direction, you know, that they, they probably should take at this point. Um, but of course, we also understand the respect that the Nigerian government, you know, and some states in particular have with regards to uh, uh, court judgments. Uh, so a lot of people also wouldn't have faith in that, you know, and they would rather st stand on the streets and protest and, you know, hope that their voice be heard. Uh, but it's sad. Really, really sad. You know, like he also said, the fact that, you know, you've done something that is illegal by sacking people. You've gone, you've reneged also on an agreement that was signed in order to end the, um, uh, the protest in the state in the first place. So it's just really sad. Mm. Anyway, this is where we will be wrapping up this morning. 
would say thank you very much for uh, your time and of course for spending time with us this beautiful Wednesday morning. If you missed out on any of these conversations that we've had, remember to join us on our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. It's all at PLOS TV Africa. I am Osao Gye My name is Aneta Felix. Thank you for watching.